What's up everybody? It is time, renovation time. And I know everyone's getting into their projects, but you know, I've been staring at this all summer. It's been killing me. So what I have going on here, it's a little compaction going on uh, on the top. It's a little crusty. So I'm just gonna spray some water. I already started over there and I'm like raking the top to fluff it up to take the seed. But what I'm gonna be doing is, cause I had some questions about how well does peat moss really work? You know, I don't really think that my dad and his dad's dad, they were using peat moss spreaders and putting peat moss all over the ground. I'm pretty sure that they were just throwing seed down. And I don't know really if farmers or sod farmers, I don't think they're out there with gigantic lansies throwing peat moss all over their fields. I'm pretty sure they're just using grass. So it seems that the regular practice in the lawn care community is using peat moss uh, after you seed, you know, and I understand that it shows whether or not it needs water because it gets darker and everything. But, you know, if you just water it once a day, twice a day, you know, keep the seed wet, it, it should be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two sections. I'm not doing my whole section. I'm just going to do two and we're going to let this run. I'm going to do peat moss on one side and no peat moss on the other. So let's get to it. All right, there it is. All nice and level. Not perfectly level, but level enough. And now what we're gonna be doing is putting some of this stuff on. So what we have here is the perennial ryegrass infusion from Barenbrug, or Jacqueline uh, seed. Uh, Barenbrug sent it over to me. We have the starter fertilizer there that I got at Lowe's in the beginning of the season and it has the miso trying in it and that way like it's a crabgrass weed preventer uh, for you know starting out the lawn and it's got a little bit of phosphorus in it and then we got the peat moss and we're gonna go spread this stuff all over the place and do this test let's go All right, it's time for the nasty. We're gonna do half peat moss. I can't stand this stuff, honestly. I bought the spreader for it too, and it just still, it's just, peat moss sucks. Oh, wish I had my gorilla cart. Oh, it's all over. If we get the same results without using peat moss, I'm gonna be a little upset. And I got a feeling I'm gonna be upset. All right guys, there it is. Using a little twisty sprinkler and an impact sprinkler. I'm still a hose dragger, always will be, but you can see our line. And we have peat moss all over there. And then we come over here. That was the area seeded with no peat moss. So, but there is one factor. I'm not saying that peat moss, you need it. You know, obviously you don't, because there is germination over here, but this is very compacted soil and as you can see plants are tipped over we got serious puddles down there and we had uh, some really bad rain and there was washout i threw seed on both areas again and it's just uh it, the slope washed it all down so is it a true true you don't need peat moss i don't think so you know because the the slope really killed it but i mean you can see over here 
little patches of grass growing. That's the washout from the peat moss. I mean, look at, I mean, let me show you. Look at this. We got little patches of grass growing where there's peat moss. So the peat moss helped it stick. You can just, you can clearly see the line. So I don't know. Hopefully this helps you guys out because I was curious myself and it's not a true true because the land is not level here, but the whole thing is a slope. So, you know, where there was peat moss, it grew a lot better. It's growing in the peat moss, it's helping it stick. And the rest of the stuff washed away. So I'm all for peat moss. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Consider subscribing to the channel, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.